Hello kids, this is Mr. Whistler with your video lesson of the day and today we are going to be talking about war at sea during the Civil War and the ironclads. Our first vocab word is blockade runner and the official is a ship that sails into and out of a blockade. A fast ship that gets through a blockade. Ironclad, they are armored navy, naval vessel or a metal ship. All right, right when the war first broke out, Lincoln ordered a blockade of all southern naval ports. You can see from this red line here that it's not going to be easy because it's a lot of coastline, uh, 3,500 miles of coastline. So they were going to have some ships that would get in and out of this. They weren't going to be able to stop everybody, but this blockade actually did a pretty good job. Blockade all the southern ports. So this blockade basically, after a while, stopped two-thirds of the southern trade, and the south had shortages in with coffee, shoes, nails, salt guns, ammunition, and it just made life hard there, and it made it hard for them to fight the war, especially with the guns and ammunition. Give me some ammo. I can't. We're in short supply. So, I want you guys to remember that when Lincoln was elected, the, st the South started taking United States military property that was located in the South. And remember, Lincoln vowed to keep all that land. Well, the Southerners kind of tested his vow, and they started taking things. And if you remember, they took Fort Sumter, and that's when the shooting started. Well, another thing that they took... Were, was a shipyard in Virginia and in this shipyard there was a ship that was being made in there it was called the Merrimack and the southerners took this ship and welded iron plates all over it and made a metal ship or an ironclad out of it you can see in this picture here this is the Merrimack this one in the back and it has metal. It's a wooden ship, but it has metal all around the outsides. And you can see that it has guns on this side, and it has guns on the other side. And the weakness in most warships back in the day is they never had guns in the front or the back, but this one you can see does. So they tried to fix that problem. This one right here is the Union ship, and it's called the Monitor, and it's a little bit different. It, it It's smaller. It sits lower in the water. It only has one cannon, but it's in a turret like a tank, and this turret rotates 360 degrees, so they can fire in all directions as well. So on March 8, 1862, the Merrimack decided to go out into Chesapeake Bay and attack a group of Union warships. Now, this battle, this strategy of the South, was to break the Union blockade. Now, at the time, the Union had all these wooden ships uh, participating in the blockade. And so this was the Confederacy's try to break this blockade, and it was actually a pretty good plan. So here is the Chesapeake Bay, and here's where um, everything happened. You can see I highlighted all these Union ships in blue. And right here is where the Merrimack went out first and you can see right here that it was go it the first two ships it ran into were the Cumberland and the Congress well both of these ships saw the Merrimack come and they were probably freaked out because they'd never seen anything like it before they see this metal thing coming and it's blasting them. Well, they start firing back, and they're both hitting the Merrimack, but their cannonballs aren't doing any damage. They just bounce off because it's metal. So the Merrimack fires on the Cumberland and sinks it, 
And then he turns its guns on the Congress and sinks it. Now the rest of the Union fleet over here kind of saw this happening and they're like freaking out because they think that they're all going to get sunk. So after the Merrimack sinks the Cumberland and the Congress, it looks over and sees the Minnesota. So it starts to go after the Minnesota. And the Minnesota, Minnesota starts to run because they don't want to get sunk. But they weren't paying close enough attention and they run into a sandbar and get stuck. So the Merrimack is headed over towards them, but it gets dark and they decide to continue the attack the next day when it's light. So the dark ends up saving the Minnesota. And like I said before, the rest of the Union fleet were freaked out because they had no way to stop this iron ship that they'd never seen before and they thought that they were all going to be sunk if they stayed there and enforced the blockade. Well, the next day on March 9th, uh, the unions, they had their own ironclad called the Monitor and it showed up. Now I don't think anybody knew, definitely all these other ships didn't know they had an ironclad. It must have been top secret. Anyway, it shows up and when the Merrimack comes out to um, sink the Minnesota, the monitor is there to protect it. Now one thing that they did call the monitor, the monitor was kind of weird looking. It basically looked like a tuna can was sitting on top of a piece of wood. So the, its nickname was Tin Can on a Shingle. Well, the monitor and the Merrimack fired on each other back and forth and the cannonballs just bounced off of each other because they were both made out of metal and they couldn't sink the other one. I think both of them sustained some damage and they just kind of limped off but neither one of them got sunk in this particular battle. So the historical significance of and this is called the Battle of Hampton Roads but the historical significance between the Monitor and the Merrimack it was the first time that ironclad warships fought. So it was on March 9, 1862. All right. Uh, on your notebook for this assignment, you guys are going to do this Clash of Iron worksheet. I want you to read this part. I want you to color these ships, the Monitor and the Merrimack. I want you to look at the chart here and then answer this, these two questions. Uh, what ch ship do you think was better for attack? Why? And what ship do you think was better for defense? Why? Uh, I gave you this picture. Put it on there. Color it up a little bit if you can. And write this down and answer this question. Why is the battle between the Monitor and the Merrimack considered historically significant? And the answer is because it was the first time ironclads had fought. And then I want you on the writing section uh, to type this up on your Google Docs, but write the story of the Battle of Hampton Roads or the battle between the Monitor and the Merrimack. And I want you to include these 10 things in there. All these articles start out with the headline and the date and place. So the date and place is... Um, March 8th and 9th, 1862, Hampton, Virginia. What happened the first day? Remember, we had a little skit on this and named the three ships. Actually, it was four ships. Named the four ships that were involved on the first day. What the Union Navy thought and what saved the Minnesota. And then tell what happened the second day and the historical significance. And then do another Google search and get the casualty lists on there. All right, that is your lesson, kids, and have a great day.